Today I will be analyzing the total body movement of a basketball dunk. A dunk is a type of shot when a player jumps in the air, controls the ball above the rim, and puts the ball directly in the hoop. The purpose of doing this is to get to the hoop with minimal interference. A complex movement like this utilizes movement in all three planes and axes simultaneously. This is because there are multiple phases of movement including preparatory, which is traveling, propulsive, which is the jump, execution, the dunk itself, and then finally follow through or recovery phase, which is landing and deceleration. But today we are going to focus on propulsive phase and take a look at the anatomical analysis and the mechanical applications. Hip, shoulder, knee, ankle, wrist, and fingers are all crucial joints used in this movement. This movement is not stiff at all. A large range of motion is required to perform hyperextension of the overall arm and flexion during the time of shooting. The muscles in the body are also working overtime. A large amount of power is needed in the legs to help the whole body ascend and in the arm to grip the basketball and shoot it in. Even though Jason Tatum appears to not be muscular, he is still very strong and is able to get past the bar. The center of gravity starts in the middle but decreases as the ball moves upward. Most of the levers used are third class but we will take a look at some examples. The straightened arm is a third class lever at the elbow which is the fulcrum. The load is the basketball and the effort force is provided by the bicep muscles. The knee and shoulder are similar however at the beginning of the jump the standing on the tiptoes would be a second class lever. The fulcrum being the toe joints, the lever arm is the foot, the calf muscle and Achilles tendon is the effort, and the load is your body weight. A dunk would be best defined as a general plane motion, meaning there is both translatory and angular movement. The body is ascending and descending while it is also rotating both the wrist and the ankle. The modifying factors are speed, time, and mass. How fast the dunker is moving during the preparatory phase can affect his or her ability to stop and jump during the propulsive phase. Timing is, is key because one cannot jump too early or too late. Body mass can heavily influence the height of the jump. Newton's third law is most important here because the force the player uses against the floor must be equally balanced, vice versa, or the player would lose balance, fall, or cause injury to themselves. A dunk is best described as a skill. The best way to get better as a skill is to practice, practice, practice. Although the height of your jump is mostly genetics, maximum height can be reached with good form. Practicing vertical jump tests is the best way to do this. Doing other types of plyometric sport activities can help your body get used to fast and rapid movements.